Welcome into another week of the Trial Technology Litigation Support Podcast. Rob Held here with you, and today's show is going to be interesting because, you know, I get a little bit, sometimes I get a little bit geeky and I get into software. Um, I have been a fan for years of needles and LexisNexis's Time Matters and I remember back in the days of Lotus Notes and Domino Server and those things, and uh, you heard on the show with Sean Hunt, you know, when Sean and I were talking about some of that stuff, and we couldn't really get down into the weeds, uh, but uh, I like how things work, and I love things that are automated, and I will tell you that one of the things that I've learned over the years, at 20 years in the legal space, and working with lawyers all across the country is that if you want a really hard job done, hire a lazy person to do it. Because if it's really hard, they're going to find an easier way because they don't want to work hard. Uh, they'll, they may be lazy, but they're not dumb. And they're going to find an easier way to get things done. And so for the past year or maybe six months, I, I'm not sure, I have been just looking at different softwares that are coming out. And of course, I see them come up on LinkedIn. Uh, Ted Brooks and I manage the Trial Technology Group, which we have, I think, almost 7,000 members now. Uh, we started off with like three. Um, and I watch different things get posted. And one of the things that caught my eye one day was a program called Law Ruler. And what really caught my eye about them was their logo. Now, this is Law Ruler, L A W R U L E R dot com, Law Ruler. And their logo, of course, is the scales of justice. And then above it, it had a crown. And I just, for some reason, I liked the logo. And so I went and started checking out their stuff. It's legal case intake and conversion software. And this has taken hold lately. Oh, I would say over the past couple of years, this has become. A very serious business. This isn't for, oh, well, my firm is, we're leading in technology or we're early technological adopters or whatever. This, this is serious business because marketing, you know, in the old days, you went to the yellow pages, you found a lawyer, you called them, you see if they can take your case. That's how it went down, guys. That's how it was when I got in the business in 1998. That is how it was. Now it's not like that. Now consumers, i.e. clients, are so savvy and so quick to not talk to you. If they call your office and somebody's going to get back to you, or somebody's going to call you later, or you'll get an email, or whatever, if they even bothered to pick up the phone, if you don't have somebody they can talk to right then, next. They're going to the next person that they see on Google. They're going to the next person that they see on Yahoo. They're going to the next firm they see on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And so most of the time, people don't even want to make a phone call. What they would rather do is go view your website, maybe interact with the chat person that says, how can I help you? Because if that chat person is on there that says, how can I help you? Then they think they're talking to somebody live. So case intake, competing for business and law firm marketing is huge. So I went to Law Ruler's site. And one of the things that I read on that site is it said, on average, only 20% of leads or referrals are sales ready when they first come in. This means you need a disciplined process known as lead nurturing to develop qualified leads until they are sales ready. That means they're just shopping, guys. It's when you go to the car dealer and you're looking at cars and somebody comes up and talks to you, you're not ready to buy yet, regardless of what their offer is. Right now, you're looking. If done well, nurturing can result in up to 50% more leads converted into signed cases at 33% lower cost per lead. That's huge. And so my guest today is the Chief Technology Officer of Law Ruler. And 
So I want to welcome to the show, because you guys know that this is how I do it. I like to go straight and get it from the horse's mouth. I want to welcome to the show today, Daniel Jacobs. Daniel, how you doing, buddy? You're going to have to unmute your mic to get on with us, but uh, tell me how you're doing today, bud. Hey, Rob. Thank you so much for inviting me to join the program. Love it. Great podcast. I'm doing great today. Thanks, man. Hey, you, uh, you've been, give us a little bit of your background because man, you've been involved in the tech space for quite a while and you've done some seriously big deals. Talk to us about how you got your start. Sure, man. Well, I think I got my start in uh, elementary school. However, (laughs) I think professionally, you know, we, you know, my team and I were developing software for the U S government for many years. And then we segued into a project that was very important to the, the Gulf coast uh, the largest natural disaster in U.S. history, the BP oil spill. Yeah, I'm and not. I'm not. I'm not familiar with those 125 <laughs> million documents, 3,740 <laughs> depositions either. <laughs> exactly. So we wrote something very specialized for plaintiff law firms, where it allowed them to, you know, do all the heavy lifting because there was more than a thousand pages of complex math and logic in order to file a claim and calculate it and submit it to the settlement authority. So it was kind of rough. So we actually facilitated that. And from that experience, we kind of discovered that there was a big problem in the legal community with the whole intake, you know, the com- communication of information to potential clients, existing clients, and, you know, just managing the entire process. So that it become a center of excellence in each law firm. Well, you heard the intro, Daniel. Do you think I was off base that this intake thing is big business? It's a huge business, and it's something where, if done right, those are the firms that, you know, are doing very well. And if it's not, they're the ones who are struggling, and then there's people who don't even know that it's it's not going well for them. They just think that that's what the numbers look like every month. Well, I had a lawyer I was talking to in Houston who told me that he still gets the back of the phone book because that's just how he gets business, and this whole thing about Google and all that, that's... That's just media hype. That's interesting. Well, you know, it, <laughs> I know, it right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, let's talk about let's talk about law ruler. In in your if you were out here and somebody said, "Well, hey, Daniel, what 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 is law ruler? What is law ruler?" I would say that law ruler is a platform that law firms use to sign more cases from their existing calls and incoming web and live chat and other leads. So take me through that process because there's something here in just a little bit. I've been looking at your site that I want to break down on this, but take me through when someone gets a program like Law Ruler. Now, you have, of course, two options we're going to go through in just a little bit. You have on-premise and versus cloud uh, ways to go. But when somebody gets this software, whether they use it on-premise or on the cloud, how user-friendly would you consider Law Ruler to be? Because a lot of people, I don't think it's that they don't want the software. I think it's that they're scared of what they have to learn. It's really important in this day and age that you make things as easy to use and streamlined as possible because nobody wants to learn something new. They, they want it to guide them. They want it to make their, their lives and their careers easier, and they just want it to fuel their success. And we feel that's what we've developed. And we've been evolving this thing for several years, and it, it's absolutely fantastic now. It's very simple, and our team will work with each client, and we'll ask them, how are you currently doing this intake process? Where is all your potential business coming from? And then we're going to work with them directly and wrap it around the way they do business. It's not a round peg in a square hole. It's, it's very interactive as far as our approach and our process. And we make sure that our clients are satisfied and, and then it works well for them. The law firm marketer's job is far from finished once someone becomes a client. For most industries, especially legal, the real value comes from retaining and deepening the customer relationship over time. I know you've got to firmly believe that, Daniel, because 90% of law firm business, believe it or not, is referral-based. It's really important. It's so important, and I agree with you there. And that's why a lot of firms are using Law Ruler for both what we call pre- and post-client marketing. 
which is after their client managing that relationship and those expectations. It's really critical. You never want you never want people to be a one off. You never want people to uh, just go away and forget about you. And I think a lot of times, you know, when you're dealing with the legal space, you either pay all this money from a defense standpoint, or as a plaintiff, you've gotten your case settled or you've gotten a verdict, and you know all the checks have gone out and everything's been signed and we're done, and you never hear from that lawyer again. And I think that's where law firms mess up. And it's not that they don't want to nurture that relationship. It's that they don't know how. And this is where Law Ruler comes into play. Now, Law Ruler is one system that replaces many different systems. Now, let's talk about that for a minute because I want to drill down on this with you and, and really focus in some of these areas. If I, For instance... You have the, the best example that I can use is I have Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, OneNote, whatever, and they're all comprised inside of the Microsoft Office suite. I don't have to leave that suite of applications to do what I want to do. And so with this, features that are included in Law Ruler. CRM and contact management, your example of that is something like Salesforce or Infusionsoft. Email newsletter and drip marketing, don't let me forget to ask you about that. An example of that is MailChimp or Constant Contact. Sure. Text message, drip marketing, and notifications, that's huge. Phone call tracking, uh, like RingCentral, Vonage, or Google Voice. Referral management and e-signature stuff like DocuSign or Adobe. Now, all of the softwares and the, the program processes that I just named are features that are included in Law Ruler. If you went out to piecemeal those and you got an individual uh, license of each one of those, they would range in cost. And I'm going to go with the most conservative costs that you have listed on your website and the total of that, to get all of what I just mentioned, would be $375 per month per user to be able to do that. Tell me about Law Ruler and where you guys are in the way you do your structure. Absolutely. So it is a valid point. We have gone out there and done the heavy lifting. A lot of firms that have actually pinpointed that they were having issues signing up cases when they're getting the calls and the leads from their website and other areas. The ones who actually figured out they had an issue went out there and they kind of took the Frankenstein approach. Right. <laughs> and they, and they, they kind of pieced these pieces, they put everything together, hodgepodged it, and, it, and it, it can work a little bit with that approach, but it ends up being very costly and they still don't have that high level management and automation. So you want to have the left hand know what the right hand's doing and have them be able to talk to each other at all times. So that's what we've coordinated. So we're offering something comprehensive. And instead of having to go buy different users for all these packages, a lot of these features are included. So a firm could just, you know, depending on the size of the firm and their intake team and <clears throat> what they were doing, they could just get, you know, a couple of users and then they'd have all these benefits right then and there. I wouldn't have to, you know, go spending all this extra money that they don't need to elsewhere. Do you think, now I'll tell you, one of the big things out here is MailChimp and Constant Contact. Great and programs. It, absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and you have been more than forth, them. yeah, you have been more than forthright on your website, lawruler.com. You have been more than forthright about everything on your website. But one thing that just, I, I was reading last night, Daniel, and how long, you and I have been in contact for weeks, if not months, just kind of back and forth, trying to get some time to do this, and I know you're busy, and I'm on the road, and things like that, but one of the things last night that I, I kept thinking about, and when I went to bed, I was like, you know what, that's amazing, Law Ruler's unique automated SMS text messaging marketing automation, which has a notable readability rate of 98% compared to just 22% for email, has been a critical success for Law Ruler customers in the area of signing more cases 
and it saves significant time following up with ongoing client interactions. So if I sent a text versus an email and I sent 10 texts or 10 emails, 98% of the texts get read, whereas 22% of the emails get read. That's staggering. Interesting, isn't it? It is. It is. Why, why, why is it? Why is it, Daniel? Why is it like that? You know, it's interesting. You know, we tell potential clients, existing clients that we've had for years, you know, the same things when we're educating them. And that is that in this day and age, more than 90% of the inquiries that, that law firms are getting are on smartphone enabled devices, you know, devices that can send and receive text messages. And a lot of the people statistically, you know, let's look at a vertical market, like, you know, personal injury, motor vehicle accidents, okay. right? Statistically, the people who get in the most accidents, nothing against them, you know, <laughs> right. are, are you know, people who are in the millennial generation. Right. So they are heavy into phone mobile device usage and they are texting. If you try and call them the old school way where you pick up the phone, somebody calls the firm, you don't respond to them immediately. Instant gratification. They're not, they're going to go to the next person on Google, next person on Google, whatever it may be. You have to speak to them in the medium that they want to be spoken to in. If you call them three days in a row after missing their initial inquiry and they see that same phone number calling them three days in a row, they're going to think somebody's on fire. Right. Right. <laughs> so you have to communicate through a medium that they're receptive to and, and, and SMS texting and multimedia texting, you know, to send kind of images or video, that's where it's at. And, well, and you got to do that. Cause you know, it's just, you know what the generation's looking for. And you know, if that's your audience and that's your niche, you, you, you want to do it on their terms. Well, I'll give you a perfect example. And, and people can go out and listen to the electronic gentleman podcast with uh, Eric Pubins and Derek sample. And they talk about how core has like 20 employees spread all over the country and they use Slack. You're very familiar with Slack chat, Daniel, I'm sure. They yeah. use Slack and text as their medium to communicate because nobody wants to talk on the phone. And especially in the millennial generation that's coming up, they would rather text. It's less formal. It's less awkward. It's less all those things. And an injured client who may not be able to talk very well or may not be able to do anything can sit and use their thumbs to text. And I just, people think, I think text is more personal now uh, than it used to be. And so it was staggering to me that that was a 98% of texts were read, whereas 22% of emails were read. And that's not saying we don't love email campaigns. It's just simply saying that, hey, this works really well. Another thing that you do is the law firm call tracking phone numbers. Take us through that process, Daniel. Yeah, that, you know, that is something that, you know, is it, it's a really sexy feature. It, it has a lot of benefits where we'll set a client up with one or more call tracking phone numbers and it'll be invisible to their clients. It'll be invisible to the caller. It'll be invisible to the law firm. So nobody knows they're calling a call tracking number. As far as they know, they're calling the law firm because the calls will instantaneously forward to the firm. And what it does is it will grab the caller ID and the name of the caller and where they're calling from and it will automatically create them as a inquiry a potential client inside of law ruler and it, it will allow them to number one automate the data entry of that call if you can't automate the data entry your response time is not going to be great it doesn't matter who's doing the data entry you know you don't want to be in a situation where you're trying to type stuff in when somebody first calls you want to you know Give them, you know, empathy, show empathy, practice active listening when somebody calls you and they're having a problem. So you want the focus to be there, not saying, oh, what's your phone number? Um, okay, let me start entering you in the system. Those are the things that you want to, you know, move past and evolve beyond. So whether it comes in the call tracking number, bam, creates them in law ruler. Very nice, slick, instantly. <clears throat> and, if, and if, you know, maybe you need to modify their name if, you know, it's slightly different on their phone registration. But, you know, you change the name and then it records the call if they disclose the recording calls. If it's allowed in that state or jurisdiction, that feature can be turned on or off. 
And what's even nice is when you automate the data entry, you can automate a extremely personal response. You know, we, you know, you can fill in names, you can fill in your name. You know, you could send somebody a text that would say, hi, Rob, thanks so much for calling. You know, we really appreciate it. Any questions in the future, feel free to text me back here. Dan. Nice. Automatically. Nice. And it sounds like somebody actually took the time to write it. I mean, and that's important. To pe- that's important to people, Daniel. Is it not important Critically, to you as a business owner? Huge. It stops people in their tracks, gets their attention, and gives them a medium they're comfortable communicating in. So moving on, another feature that you have that is a hot-button issue for a lot of people, secure HIPAA-compliant legal cloud talk about that because that's important to so many i think it's more important to old school lawyers than it is to (laughs) newer people because the newer people understand that they can encrypt everything but you have a secure hipaa compliant legal cloud talk about that yeah that 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 is a neat feature you know i'll i'll tell you you know you gotta break a few eggs to make an omelet and and i'm not gonna name any names but we went through almost every major cloud provider until we came to the people that we work with now. And I'll tell you, they, they cost a pretty penny, but our clients have no issues reaching their information. It's always quick, never has any issues. It's beautiful and it's extremely secure, HIPAA compliant. And very few other companies are offering that. And I'm not sure why. It, it's interesting because nobody really wants it but they enjoy the benefits. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 that's, that's certainly one way to put it. And, and you've got to crack a few eggs to make an omelet. I'm stealing that. I'm just going to let you know uh, yeah, that's going to be a hashtag. Uh, I am stealing it. So, so let me ask you. So let's say that uh, I'm a lawyer out here and I'm looking at this thing and it says that you have a CRM uh, and so you've got this relational management, relationship management system. You know what, Daniel, man, I already use Clio or needles, so I don't need that. What you guys integrate though, right? I would say that is a very good choice in what you went with. And that's awesome because we have a direct integration with both of those companies. Just, you know, good examples. They're both very popular, you know, and, you know, we have it so that, you know, you can have the best CRM on the planet. You can have the best anything on the planet. But if somebody actually has to sit there and type all the information in in two places, they're not going to want it, and it's not going to work out well for them. That was an early objection when we first started marketing Law Ruler a few years ago, and we made sure that we went out in the marketplace and we integrated with every single major practice management company so our clients would never have to do that. So as long as they had an API that you guys could get a hold of, you were in. Exactly. And as long as, you know, they provide us a way to do it, we did it. And if not, we have a universal format that can be imported in manually into almost any app on the planet. Now, something else that you have on your site um, as, as a feature is, and this is, this is huge. And this to me just seems like uh, it's, it's great technology and it's fast it's definitely encrypted at the 256-bit AES encryption, uh, which is what we encrypt with uh, here. Um, one of the things that we stop doing, uh, I'll give you a little example uh, before I go into this next part with you, is, is we, uh, and I think I talked about this on Sean's show, we decided that we were spending way too much money with Dropbox. Um, we were spending so much in that sector that when you start getting into unlimited space and, and terabytes of data, uh, you, you know, you're going to pay a lot for that. And, and so when you go back, uh, you know, I'm 43, so I was in my 20s when Napster started. <laughs> and if you remember Napster and Bear Share and all of those things, and even back when we were using Merck, uh, Internet Relay Chat, those were torrented bit torrent type programs they used peer-to-peer sharing uh over the internet and we decided that you know what we could take BitTorrent technology and i think BitTorrent has just this bad 
um, you know, connotation to it because of people trying to get movies or music and they've downloaded some kind of virus that was embedded or some kind of Trojan or some kind of anything. And so the term BitTorrent became bastardized. But BitTorrent actually is a wonderful thing. And so we decided to set up machines all over the country that do nothing uh, but serve on a fat fiber pipe. And we kept our data on several machines across the country. We encrypted that data to the point of if there's not like a two-part authentication handshake machine to machine, you're not getting this file. And if you do happen to intercept, you're going to get gibberish anyway. And that's what you're doing here with this medical records retrieval. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that, that is a neat feature. You know, we, we had a lot of clients approach us and, you know, all of our client, all of our integrations are client driven. They have to be, we have to know what people are looking for. What's next level. How can we help our clients be better and, and make things easier for them? And, you know, a lot of our clientele happen to be plaintiff injury firms, you know, mass tort firms, trial law firms, you know, any or any volume type litigation firm or, you know, whatever it may be, family law, immigration, you know, so they all had, you know, a lot of the personal injury ones and the mass tort ones were the ones who needed something like that, where we asked them, who would you like us to do this integration with? So they identified a provider that could get them anything they want anywhere in the U.S. and for medical records, x-rays, labs, you know, medical bills, and anything. So we did that, and we integrated with, with the company that provided that. So all they have to do is, you know, use the information that's already in Law Ruler, you know, maybe fill out a couple extra things, and then press a button, and it sends the order to them. And when it comes back, it saves right in a Law Ruler as a, as a, as a uh, compressed PDF that's, you know, searchable and, you know, OCR-friendly. So you, you're, you're taking this process and you're speeding it up. You're making it where I can make better use of my time practicing law and not worry about all of the mundane data entry and copying fields and moving things from an Excel spreadsheet to a Word document and those types of things. Now, let's move on to another thing that is going to fascinate me, and that is cool. law ruler can be done one of two ways. It can either be done on-premise or it can be done via the cloud. And there have been many uh, people who have objected to the cloud. You know, the cloud is nothing more than somebody else's computer, blah, blah, blah. Look, bottom line is this. I work a lot of times at a Starbucks and I work in hotels and I work in places that I don't want to mess with VPN I don't want to mess with TeamViewer, go to my PC, uh, any, any any of those things. I, I don't, it's so fun. No, come on. I don't want to have to deal with what ports need to be opened. I don't want to deal with TCP IP configuration. I don't want that crap. And so keeping it in the cloud is just fine with me. So there are two options, one in the cloud, one on premise. I want to ask one question before we jump in. Is there a price difference between on-premise and cloud? Yes. Okay. So if you have the on-premise, you, you have listed on your website, you should probably use the on-premise version if you have a server and don't mind maintaining it for the sake of a better solution. Well, that in and of itself to me is an oxymoron because it's not a better solution and I don't want to maintain it. Uh, you want to maintain your own network security and servers. You want data staying behind your network firewall. Uh, you have your own IT staff members or managed service provider to maintain your servers and network. Look, I think all of that is fine and good, but the cloud solution is definitely better. Plus, if you use a Mac, you probably need to be on the cloud server solution. Talk to the lay people who may not understand a damn thing of what we're talking about what is the difference between on-premise and cloud, and what do you, as the chief technology officer of Law Ruler, what do you suggest? I, I think I think that offering is dependent on the needs of each client. However, for the most part, we always tend to recommend cloud. It's something that is maintained constantly by a team of professionals in the cloud provider that we use and it's just much more streamlined it's pain-free 
not, you know, you know, for example, when you're on premise, if, if there's a internet connectivity issue with the law firm, they're going to have an issue. Yeah. You don't have those issues in a redundant cloud environment where, you, you know, you have major facilities going in there. I mean, for example, our, our cloud is mirrored across the country right now, you know, multiple data centers and, you know, our cloud is hosted one in Miami, for example, in the data center of the Americas, for example, it's one floor below DOD and, and DHS, you know, Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, the amount of uh, resources and availability that are in that location are massive and could never be replicated on premise anywhere. So you have that redundancy, that availability, you know, I think it's where it's at. I always recommend it personally. Well, and here's the other thing. Um, you know, I, I think people get scared of, you know, data breach. And when, for instance, uh, I think it was back in July, uh, AWS went down and, you know, Amazon Web Services went down. Uh, you've had some of the data breaches at Target. And I think, I think a lot of that gets overblown and it causes a lot of media hype that is sometimes just untrue. And, you know, when you start throwing out fancy $5 words, uh, people tend to get scared. And so 90% of the population just wants things to work. They don't know where the data is or where it's housed. I mean, it doesn't matter to me what rack space I'm sitting in or what X-Blade server I'm sitting <laughs> on, as long as I can access it, right? Uh, I think that's, that's the biggest deal. And so for me... You know, when you look at that, I, I've never, I've never steered away from. Go ahead and keep it in the cloud because I just, I want to access it everywhere I go. And you've mentioned the perfect example. If Miami goes down, Ottawa and Kansas City and L.A. and Chicago and Mexico City are still up, so you're not going to miss anything. You're not going to lose any of that data. I, I, that's my, that's my opinion. What do you think? I think it's a valid opinion. I, I do agree with you. So let me ask this. <clears throat> what I don't see on your website, um, and you're free to say, you know what, that's something that we tailor it. it. I don't see the pricing of what law ruler is going to cost me as a lawyer. And that could be for a multitude of reasons. Um, so let me ask two questions before we get to that. First one, how scalable are you? I.e., you need this, you need this, you need this, or you can it's a one price solution, or you, you can pick and choose what you need. How scalable is Law Ruler? Our our solution is, you know, on a per user basis, and it, it includes everything that somebody would need. You know, there there are gonna be certain things, you know, if somebody's sending out you know, a lot of text or have a lot of calls, you know, just like any other service, they're going to have some, you know, usage based services there that they're going to be responsible for that are very reasonable. Other than that, you know, as far as price, I really believe it needs to be tailored per client, but I can share that our, you know, our basic packages, you know, start around a couple hundred dollars a month. You know, I feel that's very affordable in this day and age. And it depends what the needs are, how extensive an implementation is. And, how many integrations that we would have to make sure are, are set up and functioning properly and customized for each client. So okay. that, that's where, you know, we change we, the implementation will vary for each client, but the monthly fee it's, it's competitive with anyone on the market. And we feel that we're jamming a lot more into that box for everybody. Okay. Let, let, let's talk about that a minute. $200 a month, let's say just, you know, at the basic level, 200 bucks a month. Somebody says, well, holy cow, that's $2,400 a year. But let me ask you something, Mr. Lawyer. Let's put your lawyer hat on, Daniel, and let me ask you a question. <laughs> if you paid $2,400 a year and one case came through Law Ruler that you had on a 33 and a third percentage contingency fee, that you settled for 1.5 million. My question to you is: Was that 2,400 a lot? No, I, I I would say that the juice is definitely worth the squeeze. The juice. You are just day. you are just the king. Of, the juice is definitely worth 
the squeeze. <laughs> and you have to crack some eggs to make an omelet. God, you, I love it. I love it. Uh, okay. So <laughs> so there therein lies the rub. Okay. 200 a month, that is a pittance. Do you know, do, do you remember the old program that was out there, Time Matters? Yes. That, that cannot perform 50% of the functionalities that you do. Do you remember the cost of Time Matters off the shelf? Not only the cost, but the cost to maintain? <laughs> well, you know, it, it's an on-premise based solution last I checked. Mm -hmm. And it, it does require maintenance. You know, it wasn't designed initially during the cloud era. So, you know, it has it. It's a different product. Well, different, and, different and it's like it's like where we are right now and what we do, Daniel. You know, I'm on OnQ support staff and OnQ is used as a trial technology software that's put out by OnQ uh, at OnQtech.com. We have an annual we have a monthly subscription that you can turn on and off. So if you are paying 80 bucks a month and you use it this month and next month, and then you turn it off, and then you turn it back on three months from now because you're going to trial again, that's perfectly fine with us. Or there's a $65 a month uh, solution to buy if you pay for the year up front. Well, that, that total to pay for that up front is $780 for the year. And somebody asked me yesterday, they said, well, you know, that sure is a lot of money, $780. Bucks. And I said, well, number one, that in, for something I don't own. And I said, well, number one, you get all the updates, all the support, and all the training you need for that price. Number two, what other business in America can you go out and in one half day of billing in our industry, you've paid for the entire year? That means you're going to be using the software at, as a pure profit center for 364 and a half days. <laughs> and it's, it's the same thing with the argument of the monthly subscription model. It's like people want to own something. Yeah. Why, hey, why, <laughs> why, why do you want to own obsolete technology? Why do you right. want to do that? Carry all that overhead of, of the maintenance, carry all the overhead of, you know, hey, maybe you need something and that the person you need it from is on vacation that day or they're out sick. What do you do that? Absolutely. You know, if you outsource to somebody reliable, and you have a good partner that has redundancy inside their organization, you always have that, I'm not going to say it here, like the oh bleep button. I'll say it, and the oh shit it. button. And you mean, what, what does that, yeah, what does that cost? Right. What is that headache worth one day when you actually needed something? And you're going to go out there looking for somebody who's going to help you and making all those calls. Time is our most valuable commodity. And the amount of time that that would waste for somebody who is a successful attorney or their support staff is just too much well Plus the hassle and, and raising the blood pressure forget it and it's not if, to deal with somebody reliable who can help me and i know they're going to be there and i know their service is good well and and it's not if something goes wrong it's when, it's when. something goes wrong <laughs> it's when. so I mean, we live in a subscription-based economy it's the reality in this day and age hey i we do uh, uh our daughter and her husband do hello fresh and we've done blue apron and my wife does birch box and i do dollar shave club and so there you go it's it's all member. I pay a monthly membership at the gym. You know. How is the Dollar Shave Club? Man, you know, it's uh, it's good. I mean, you know, you can literally scale it up and down as you need to. They've got good razors. I mean, you know, it kind of is what it is. I alternate back and forth between Dollar Shave Club and Harry's, and uh, you know, the shave butter's pretty good, and you know, it's not bad. I I'm gonna reach out to them though and get them to pay me for that endorsement. Um, <laughs> so th thanks for being a profit center for me. Uh, listen, let me ask you another question and, and this is loaded and I expect you to be biased. And so do the listeners. I'm sure, uh, the attorneys and paralegals that listen to this show, you know, we've been blessed in the number of subscriptions that we have on iTunes and the number of people who are subscribed to the show and download the show or the number of people who go to the website uh, podcast.defactotrial.com and listen to the show. And just through what we've been able to tell, a lot of them are lawyers and paralegals. So you're going to be biased in your answer and that's okay. And it's okay to be truthful. On a scale of one to 10 with one being the worst, 10 being the best, what is your user friendliness? 
to from 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 the time you start Law Ruler until you're actively using it, what is the user friendliness? I'm gonna say realistically a nine. Wow. And I, and I don't want to give myself a ten because. I think that's unrealistic for anybody right? because there's going to be a slight learning process, no matter what it is that we try, whether it's a new razor or new software. And, you know, our team's on always available to walk clients through it. It's part of our process. We make sure they understand how to use it and, and we make sure they're happy, but you're always going to have a little bit of resistance with change. Yep. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, let me ask you about your support. Because that's huge for people. I know I, I can speak for on cue because I'm on their support team. I don't work for on cue, but I volunteered time to be on their support team because I learn uh, by being on that team. And, you know, as an old school developer from way back, I kind of enjoy doing some of that support. And I take calls literally on Saturdays, Sundays, at night. Uh, I've been driving down the road at 11 o'clock at night, support call come in. I take it while I'm driving down the road and talk them through whatever the problem is. How is, so our support is unparalleled in the trial technology industry. How is your support for law ruler? I think support's the most important thing. It's our foundation. It's our core. It's everything. And I, I think our support is our strongest attribute. And I think any company that wants to be successful needs to feel the same way. You gotta live it and breathe the support and make sure your clients are happy and make sure that, you know, you reach out to them. You ask them how things are going. You don't only be there when there's an issue. Everybody has issues. It's about how you manage those issues and how you respect your clients and, and how, how good you make them feel as well as how successful you make their business. And Ab we think we fire, fire well in all those cylinders. Absolutely. And that's, I think that's what's, you know, amazing for, people who are in this type of business is you have to be able to be available and being available is a huge thing. Um, you're still a grassroots company. You're, you're still, you know, you haven't gone into that big, you know, Oh, we're owned by Lexus Nexus or we're owned by Westlaw or we're owned by one of these big companies. You're still grassroots. And when I go on your website and I click on the link for the happy clients and the testimonials that you have, uh, the testimonials, are, they speak for themselves. So it's kind of like, you know, well, don't believe what, you don't have to believe what, what, what Daniel's telling us. What you need to believe is, is your peers out here that are using the software that are telling you, hey, you need to do this. And so I think that speaks volumes for your software. Another thing that you have is your blog. Um, you know, you're, you're writing uh, different things. Um, you guys... Uh, did a software release. You did a new look uh, recently. Uh, January 15th, I think, is when you posted the blog on the press release. And, you know, the, the program has become even more robust. And here's the thing about monthly subscription, Daniel, is that everybody that's already a user got that update. They didn't have to pay extra for it. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that's, that's the whole idea. That's that's the whole idea behind it. So absolutely, you 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 say something on here. You said, "Ever wonder where you find closely held secrets on how to make your marketing efforts pay off?" You guys know those secrets. You've tapped into them and you've figured it out. And you also ask, "How much do you spend every month in marketing and not see what you think you should coming back to you?" You guys have also tapped into that. And so I'm I'm more than impressed with what I've seen and what I've looked at on the site. I have not used Law Ruler because, and I'll tell you, I mean, we do the same thing uh, with with what we're doing in the uh, on, on the side of trial technology. We have to onboard so we onboard lawyers the same way lawyers onboard people. We do it the same way because we're marketing to that that group. And so these kinds of software work well for us as well. And so I, I literally think that you guys can maneuver into a space that's really good. And I, I'm, I'm very impressed with what you have on the site and very impressed with what you're bringing to the marketplace. 
and I would encourage people to reach out to you. And the best way to do that is to probably go to lawruler.com. Is that correct, Daniel? lawruler.com l-a-w-r-u-l-e-r just like it sounds check it out we got lots of great info all the info on our website's free of charge there's some stuff that will actually help somebody with their you know their their client signing process to you know get more out of what they're doing and you know get dip your toe in the water you know see what it's about read what other clients have to say i'll even tell you that most of our business is actually referral based and we've done very well with it well, and you can go right on the front page of the website, which I just, by the way, I just went to the front page of the website, and so I want to apologize to everybody for the music starting, but when you go on, it immediately starts the video. Um, you have an area that right there, you just fill out your name, your company, your phone, your email, your current practice management system, and the current number of leads per month that you're looking for, and you hit start demo, and you guys have a fully ready-to-go demonstration of your software available for anybody, Correct. Yep, our, 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 our approach is, you know, somebody will contact us. They can certainly review the videos online to see what it looks like. However, you know, we'll actually set up a demo account for somebody and give them a guided tour. You got to break a few eggs to make an omelet. The juice is worth the squeeze. <laughs> and, the last, and the last one, would you rather be Yellow Cab or Uber? I love that. I, 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 think, that's, I think that's great. Um, automating intake is a huge thing. You guys will help people though that are, are scared or they don't know exactly what they're doing. You guys I'm sure have a team that can help people get started and show them the best practices, right? Absolutely. That's what we're all about. Absolutely. All right. Well, Hey, listen, I'll, I'll tell you what, I want to thank you for coming on the show. I know we've been trying to do it a while and I'm always interested in these kind of softwares that are out there because we use it to get our LOE. We use software like this to get our LOE signed and to continue uh, working a relationship, we have built-in forms that we use. So we just fill in a few fields and it auto-generates those things that you don't want to have to cut and paste all the time. And so it works really well for us. But you can bet that I will look at and figure out, hey, let's take a look at Law Ruler. Let's see what it does. Let's see what it can do for us. Let's see what it can do for, for what we do in our group and, and see how well that works because we don't have a multitude of users in de facto trial works. My company, um, you know, we have, you know, probably three or four people or five people that would be using this uh, on a regular basis. And so, you know, what can we gain back from that? What can we get from that? So that's something we have to look at. So give it a look, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, I only, I, I give everybody a chance to come on the show and talk about what we do. I don't have any advertisers. You guys know that. I've said it ad nauseum. We generate no money off of this podcast. We don't monetize it. But if I like something, I'll talk about it and I'll use it until I don't like it anymore. And then I won't talk about it. So I want to encourage you, lawruler.com. Go check it out. Go look through that website. Get a demo. Take a look at it and see what you think. Because I'm telling you, anything that can help your practice, anything that can help your business, not just lawyers, not just paralegals, but trial technology consultants, videographers, e-discovery folks, litigation support personnel. If you're trying to automate some systems, this is the way to do it. Go check it out, lawruler.com. And thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for listening to the show. I wouldn't do this if I didn't have listeners. And thank you for all the feedback that you give me on every show we release. I appreciate the emails. That's rob at defectotrial.com, R-O-B-B at defectotrial.com. For my guest, Daniel Jacobs, I'm Rob Helt, and we'll catch you next week on the Litigation Support and Trial Technology Podcast. <laughs>